We learned that Russian President Vladimir Putin sent the next president of the United States, Donald Trump, a letter. In it, the Russian leader called for a stronger relationship between the two countries. And this is happening even as both sides are weighing in on expanding their nuclear weapons capability. And as the president-elect said, let there be an arms race. He said that just this morning. Now, Sean Spicer, who will be the White House press secretary, he came here on CNN trying to clarify that. Listen. He is going to do what it takes to protect this country. And if another country or countries want to threaten our safety or sovereignty, he's going to do what it sure, takes. Sure, but he's not waiting until another country threatens us. He's making these He's making it very clear. No, right, but he's making it very clear that other countries and other companies you've seen with Carrier and other, he's going to make it clear that he will be an active president that will get things Meaning done. Meaning he will use nuclear weapons if no, need no, be. No, he will, he will not take anything off the table. What it means is that he's not going to sit back and let another country act. All right, let's talk about this now. I want to bring in Matt Bennett, Democratic strategist, senior vice president, and co-founder of the think tank Third Way. Steve Cortez is an advisor to Donald Trump, or was an advisor during his campaign, close to the Trump transition. And, and Edward Isaac Dovier is senior White House reporter with Politico. Guys, uh, we got a whole lot of news going on. I wish we had hours to discuss everything that's happening, but let's talk Russia first. I guess we'll talk nuclear weapons quickly, then we'll talk, you know, my friend, the Russian leader, wrote me a letter. Uh, on, on nuclear weapons first, let it be an arms race. Matt Bennett, that is the extension of an exchange yesterday between Donald Trump and Russia over expanding nuclear capabilities. Your reaction? Well, this is exactly what people like me who opposed Donald Trump in this race feared, which was he was going to shoot from the hip without having any idea what he's doing or talking about. He's, in fact, he's doing it before becoming president, and we have a tradition in this country that president-elects don't try to make foreign policy, as this one apparently is. And he is saying things that are incoherent to, uh, to the world and to the Russians, and that is very, very dangerous. I'm not sure if it's incoherent as open to interpretation, right? When he's talking about strengthening nuclear capability, strengthening and expanding nuclear capability, Steve Cortez, some people look at that and say, oh, he just means modernize. Is that how right. you read it? It, it certainly is how I read it. And by the way, it's really not even new policy because the current President Obama has talked at length but, about this, about how we need Steve, to commit more Steve, resources let me, let, to let modernizing. Let me cut you off right here. Let me cut you off right here. Yes, it, it is the Obama policy. Not part of the Obama policy is let it be an arms race, which is how sure. Donald Trump expanded on it this morning. Right. And you're right. And that, that part is new. But what I think he means by that, I think Sean Spicer alluded to this, what he means is that we will not be outmatched. We will not be outgunned, quite literally, uh, by anyone in the world. I think that, that in recent years, unfortunately, America has not been feared by our enemies, and we haven't really been trusted by our friends, Israel in particular, which you're talking about a lot today. And that's going to change. Uh, with, it's already, who, I think, starting to change with President Trump. Who's outgunning us, and who's outgunning us, uh, who's outgunning and, us on nuclear weapons? Nobody is, but the point is, and nobody will. And I think that's what he's promising, that that won't happen, whether it's Russia, uh, whether it's states that aren't necessarily nuclear, but still have, uh, have ill will toward us, states like Iran, that we're not going to give a billion and a half dollars in cash to countries uh, that, that mean us harm and that mean Israel harm. Uh, we're not going to be uh, outgunned when it comes to nuclear capability by Russia, by China, by anyone. I think that's the point, uh, is that he's making the statement that America, security is one of the key reasons that he won this race. I think it's Prosperity and security. Uh, those right. dual goals are going to be incredibly important to him. Edward, let me ask you about the next step of what's going on here, because the Russian leader we just learned today, the, the Trump transition released it. Vladimir Putin wrote Donald Trump a letter last week uh, congratulating him, saying essentially he looks forward to an improved relationship with the United States. There's a picture of the letter, but what I'm going to read you uh, is part of the response from President-elect Trump today. He said a very nice letter from Vladimir Putin. His thoughts are so correct. I hope both sides are able to live up to these thoughts and we do not have to travel an alternate path. Now, I have to be honest, when I read that language from Donald Trump, I was surprised because that language from a man, a candidate who was very, very kind uh, about Russia and about Vladimir Putin, that seems to be drawing a little bit of a line. That's an implicit threat right there that I hope things are good or else. 
and, and in the context of talking about increasing our nuclear arsenal, I think people could say, well, what does an alternate path really mean? But it does seem here that uh, overall, uh, President-elect Trump is looking for a very different relationship with Russia. And certainly we know that Vladimir Putin is looking for a very different relationship with the United States. What the Obama administration has uh, done in its relationship with Russia has been uh, very rush on, uh, rough on the Russian economy uh, through the sanctions on many people who are close to Putin uh, through those direct individual sanctions and overall in limiting the Russian sphere of influence uh, it, we are moving into a position uh, in geopolitical affairs that it's not just about the United States but all over Europe a rise of leaders who are more amenable to working with Putin uh, people who do not seem like they would be as quick to rush to uh, condemning him on something like the invasion of right. Crimea or, or any of the other things that he has done that has troubled Barack Obama and troubled uh, Angela Merkel, other European leaders. I, I, I was surprised though, to see Donald Trump's language there. It was the first time I've seen him sort of draw a line uh, when it does come to Russia. Can I move on to Israel? Because it's also fascinating what's going on at the United Nations, we believe, in just three hours, where there will be, we think, a vote uh, condemning Israeli settlements uh, in the West Bank. Uh, you, you know, Matt Bennett, uh, Israel, we have a statement from an Israeli official which says that President Obama and John Kerry accuses the President and Secretary of State of being behind this vote, orchestrating this vote. Now, we don't have any reason to, to, to know whether that, in fact, is true, but it does raise questions. At a minimum, we know it's been said that they may vote yes on this resolution or abstain. It does show that this White House is willing to make a policy statement, a significant policy statement that changes U.S. policy just a matter of a, a couple dozen days uh, before the next president is sworn in. Well, it changes it some, and, and uh, the ambassador was right in the previous segment that, uh, that the U.S. had voted against this kind of resolution before. But don't forget that the Obama administration has been putting intense pressure on the Netanyahu administration for years to stop the settlements. In fact, uh, early in the administration, Joe Biden got on his plane and went home when uh, some settlement that uh, had been stalled were announced that they were going to go forward while he was in the country and he was furious about that so this has been a real sore point between the United States and Israel for a right. long time but the other thing is here again you had the president-elect uh, still weeks away from being sworn in as president acting as president trying to make foreign policy and again that is just complete not only unprecedented it is outrageous it is not how we do things as Americans guys we have just a minute left and I want to get both uh, Edward and Stephen if I can Edward first to you because you cover the White House you obviously mm -hmm. know about this this would be a, a heck of a parting statement from the Obama White House yes uh, certainly, and, and of course, uh, coming at the end of uh, seven and a half years of overlapping leadership between Netanyahu and Obama, that has been very troubled and uh, very rough. Of course, you know, it was not that long ago that we were uh, spending months talking about the speech that Netanyahu gave right. to the joint session of Congress, where he went uh, behind the backs of the, the White House and, uh, in, in scheduling that with the, the Republican leadership in the House then that infuriated the White House and felt to right. them like uh, the worst possible thing that could happen uh, other than Netanyahu uh, winning re-election, which they were very much against. So uh, it, it's not surprising that we get to this point uh, as Obama's leaving and uh, Netanyahu looking for an advantage. Steve, I just have 10 seconds for a quick response from you. Sure. We're going to become an ally to Israel again. We're going to stop coddling Iran. We're going to support them in the United Nations. We're going to move the, um, our embassy to Jerusalem. The United States will once again be a real friend and ally to Israel under President Trump. A lot of change, a lot of developments. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Up next